you have bad knees, are you worried about your knee alignment in poses like a full lunge or a deep squat? Have you heard that knee over toes is bad or that knee over toes is good? Maybe you've heard knee over ankles is the safest alignment. You don't really care. You just want to take care of your knees and hopefully build stronger knees. If so, this video is for you. Hey, my name is Lucas. I'm a yoga teacher. And in this video, we will talk about the anatomy of knee alignment, knee over ankle, knee over toes. We'll talk about why it's important to get rid of good versus bad, instead focus on stable versus less stable. And lastly, and maybe most importantly, we'll look at some exercises you can do to strengthen your knees. As is usual, down in the description below, you can find a PDF with a reference to the exercises we'll do as well as photos. Quick disclaimer here, I'm not a doctor. If you have a serious medical condition with your knees, please err on the side of caution and go seek help. This is for educational purposes only. Let's start off talking about the anatomy of your knee joint. Your knee is a hinge joint, which means it likes to open or close. It doesn't like to twist or rotate very much at all. It's a synovial joint, so you can't see here in this model, but there is a synovial fluid sac encapsulating the joint here. And the way to think about knee alignment is simply in terms of architecture. If you were to imagine that this was an architectural shape you might find in your town, if you went and looked at the side of a building, if we built two cinder blocks on top of each other, for example, straight up and down is going to be the most stable structure. We don't even need a lot of support here. As we begin to hinge here, let's imagine this is the roof of a home you might see in your town. We get to a 45 degree angle. Obviously, this is less stable than straight up and down, but still very stable. Snow could fall, rain could pour off the edge, and this is going to be a very strong structure. As we get to 90 degrees, already you can see my hinge is open. And if we had heavy snowfall, even this could be a problem. As we bend past 90 degrees, this is really when our muscles, the core support system for your knee, switches off. And then you're really reliant on the auxiliary support, which are your ligaments, your bone to bone connective tissues and your tendons. And this leads into the second part of our conversation today. It's really important not to focus on good versus bad, but instead focus on stable, a little less stable, a little less stable, and then not so stable at all. And from there you can make a decision what's right for you. Let's switch and take a look at this second model where you can see the ligaments, bone to bone supportive tissues, the tendons, muscle to bone supportive tissues. We can even see the cartilage on the inside here. These tissues are really important stabilizers. It's like scaffolding for your building. However, the muscles are doing most of the stability when we're in a more up and down straight or even all the way to a 90 degree bend. The key thing when you remember about strengthening your knees is that the muscles that support your knee They'll strengthen very quickly your quads, your hamstrings, your gastrocnemius on the back of your calf. You'll begin to notice strength changes within 10 or 14 days. That's great. These ligaments and tendons and cartilage, they're going to take three months or longer to strengthen. So we really want to move with care. Whether you're squatting or lunging, doing a gym workout or just moving up and down stairs at a home and trying to avoid knee pain, the key thing is to number one, take it slow. And especially when you start, work in those safer, more stable ranges. Let's take a look at a simple five minute routine you can do to build up your knee strength and stability over time. All three exercises we'll do today, we'll be practicing with our knees slightly past our toes, but we'll be doing that with support. We'll be doing that with support and we'll work in a range where you can always back off. Now, some of you will still want to practice your weightlifting, your yoga, your lunges with knee over ankle for stability. It's still helpful in terms of strengthening and stabilizing both the muscles and the connective tissues of your knees to practice in a deeper end range. Let's get into the pose and I'll explain a little more. Back knees down, feel free to put a pad under your back knee. My right leg is lunged forward. In yoga, we call this a crescent lunge. However, I'll lunge, lunge, lunge forward until my knee is moving past my big toe. I'll hit a timer for one minute total and I'll pause here. Now you can rest your hands on top of your knees. You could potentially put your hands on your sides or if you'd like to, you could extend your arms above your head. I'll release my arms so we can talk, but you do whichever of those modifications works for you. A couple of very important things. When your heel stays down, that gives you a lot of extra stability for your knee. When your back knee is down, it also gives you a lot of stability. You stay where you are. I'll show you what not to do. 
you don't want to pop your heel. I'll show you what else not to do. You don't want to be up on your toes and with your heel off the ground. That's putting my knee in a very vulnerable position. My goal here is to isometrically load the connective tissues of my knee so that over a period of months they can strengthen and stabilize so that if and when I work in a deeper range of motion, I have the stability needed. When you're here in these practices, I'd encourage you to breathe slowly in and out through your nose. Okay, let's slowly release. Your knees are as wide as your mat. Your big toes touch back behind you. You can bounce into a child's pose just for a moment. We'll switch sides. Right knee's down, my left leg lunges forward. I'll start my clock, same thing as before. I'll lunge my knee in this crescent lunge pose past my big toe. Three options, hands on top of your knee, hands on your sides, or extend your arms in a prayer position. Again, we call this a crescent lunge pose in yoga. As a reminder, my knee stays down. As a reminder, my Knee and my heel are down so that I have stability here in the front. And if you feel any discomfort, any sharp shooting twinge, you simply back off and modify. I often encourage students to take one step back from any pain, and that's where you practice today. One of the advantages of isometric poses is it gives us control, and it also gives us a way to load those connective tissues in a way that's very, very guided and measured, meaning we're not jumping or bouncing into anything where we could potentially put those tissues at risk. Let's breathe in through our nose and out through our nose. Good, and slowly release. Your big toes touch back behind you and we'll bounce in a child's pose. One, two, and three. For this next pose, we need a stool. This next pose is called a Sisyphus squat, or a sissy squat for short. We practice up on our toes, which as we spoke about earlier, is one of the least stable positions. We'll also take our knee into full flexion or as far as we can comfortably. Let's get into the pose and then I'll talk you through some of the modifications. I'll pop up on my toes, hands on the stool for support, and slowly flex my knees, flex my knees as far as I can pain free, using my hands as much or as little as needed to support myself here. My knees can come further forward or my body can come further forward to support. What's happening here? Well, the hinge joint of my knee, it's all the way open and exposed. This is the least stable position for my knees. That doesn't mean it's bad, it just means less stable. So I use my hands for support if needed, but by training isometrically, by holding it statically, over time, over a period of months, I can stabilize in this least stable range so that if and when I might need to get into this position, whether it's on purpose or whether I'm coming down off a step or a curb, I can hopefully have the stability I need to get through it. Let's breathe in and out through our nose. And again, if I felt any pain or discomfort, I could modify, modify, modify as needed to find a place that works for you. For this last pose, we need a block or a book or a pillow. Final pose we'll do today is called a forward step lunge. And again, we'll work in that knee over toes position that you'll often find yourself in when you're coming down a flight of stairs, for example. You need a block or a book to put between your knees here, just to keep your legs aligned. Let me show you from the side what we'll do. I'll start a timer. My block goes between my knees. I'll lunge forward with my right foot and I'll bend my left knee over my toes and I'll steeple my hands right at my heart here. And if you feel comfortable, you could inch your heel, your right heel, a little more forward here. Just make sure your left heel stays down on the ground, heavy down into the ground, Little bit of shaking, little bit of trembling is normal here as you breathe in and out through your nose. As we load and statically, so isometrically load our bent left leg, we're working on strengthening those supporting connective tissues, also the muscles, but those connective tissues in general. They need a lot more patience and a lot more safety as we work on this end range stability.
Good, and slowly make your way back up. You can punch out your leg and we'll switch sides. Please remember you work just to the place where you feel comfortable. If you feel too much pressure on your knee, you back off a little bit, even if your knee's not past your toes. Let's switch legs. Block goes between my legs. This time I'll bend my right knee and I'll extend my left heel out in front of me. Sometimes you have to wiggle in position to get into this. Once you find the pose, you can shimmy wiggle your heel forward, your left heel. Your right heel should stay down on the ground. Steeple your hands at your heart. Your chin stays lifted as you gaze forward here and breathe. So even though you might not train in this range of motion, whether it's yoga or weightlifting, whatever it might be, running, when you come down off a stair, when you're stepping down off something, very often your knee does go into this range. And so to work here, to train here for stabilization, it makes a lot of sense. We just want to do it in a very safe and controlled fashion. and release you can shake out your legs and we are done this five minute routine you could do three times per week remember never overdo it never push through pain take it easy hope you found this video helpful a couple of ideas with your knees remember less is more oftentimes you have to slow down we did static poses so that later you can speed up we're training very carefully in our end range here for stability even though in your exercise routine you might work in a much more conservative range of motion. If you'd like more science-based yoga videos, please hit subscribe down below. You can find my teaching calendar at yogabody.com, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.